This segment that we're going to uh, cover uh, is about advisory boards uh, and basically kind of the, the value proposition that they bring to both startups and uh, emerging growth companies in general. So what I wanted to do first of all is just kind of do more of a, a bigger picture uh, discussion of what is that value proposition to uh, a younger stage company, whether it be startup or one that's a little, a little further along. And it really comes down to um, experience. Um, unfortunately, we all know that uh, startups and, and young companies, the percentage of them that fail is, is significantly high. And a lot of that has to do with the uh, failure to, to execute on business plans and, and the mistakes that are made. And really what uh, the advisory board and, and I do as a, an advisor and as a business lawyer is try to help companies minimize those mistakes. And, and the best way to do that is to surround yourself with people that are experienced at having done this before. Um, because a lot of people, including investors and others that you may want to get involved with, are going to be more comfortable if they feel like there's a group involved that has either been through this process or is smart enough to surround themselves with people that have been through this process and are getting good advice about it. One of the things a lot of uh, entrepreneurs will, will ask me is like, I kind of get that, Brent. I understand that investors and others want to see, you know, kind of an experienced management team and that gives them comfort that if investment uh, money is being put into a company or uh, relationships are being developed, that the chances of that company succeeding are going to be higher. But how do I do that if I've never done this before? If I'm kind of new to startup work or if I'm new to launching a company, I might have been with a company and done, been involved with certain aspects of it, but I haven't been kind of the co-founder and taking the lead on, on the effort. Well, that's where the advisor and advisory boards come into play and where they become what I like to say a, a valuable company asset. What you do is you try to identify people that have experience that can advise you in those areas where you may not have the experience. Um, you know, again, investors and others, frankly, like when entrepreneurs can acknowledge there are areas of weakness that they have, but then do something about it uh, by bringing people in that can fill those gaps. And by filling those gaps, you're essentially using the experience of these people, these advisors, to leverage their experience, their industry knowledge, uh, and their acumen to give the, the third party, whether again it be investor or somebody else, comfort that uh, you're doing what's necessary to be successful as, as a company. Um, it's clear that, that you're going to make mistakes, um, but again it's all about trying to minimize those mistakes. So, you know, the next kind of thought process is, okay, I kind of get the value proposition. I mean, it, it makes a lot of sense to bring in people to fill those knowledge gaps, those experience gaps, and help me through this process. Uh, how do I go about doing that? Well, it really kind of depends on where you are in the stage of that process. For example, are you literally still at the business plan stage? Or are you at the prototype stage? Or are you past that and are you looking to actually launch a product already? Depending on, on what stage you're in, you're going to look to different people for the experience that you need. Uh, first of all, obviously identifying areas that, that you're, it's not a strength of yours um, and, and figuring out what person might be able to fill that gap uh, with experience that you don't have. But for example, if you're still in product development, maybe that's the, the person you want to bring on. Somebody that has experience doing product development or maybe it's a person that's done a lot of uh, um, business plans and developing those business plans and, and figuring out the best way to structure that and to really force you through a vetting process of what the investment community or others are going to ask you if they look at that, that investment deck or that PowerPoint that you've put together and, and see what, uh, what needs to be done in that regard. Um, so, you know, as, as you identify these people uh, or areas that you need, um, you know, of course, the next question is, well, how do I find that person? Um, and I guess I've, what I've always told entrepreneurs, and I do it myself as an entrepreneur, as a, as a business person, is I think networks are just key. Um, building a network will allow you over time to hopefully have access to those types of people or have access to people 
who know those types of people. Um, so certainly networking is, is critically important. Um, you know, if you're going into a particular industry, um, whether it be tech or maybe it's active lifestyle, sports and outdoors or something else like that, uh, clearly you're going to want to try to reach out and identify people in, in those industry sectors that can help you along. So networking is key, uh, do I think. Identifying and finding the, the right type of, of advisors that uh, you can bring into the, into the company. Um, the other source that you might, you know, certainly can look to, and I know I'm reached out to the companies, is, is your professional advisors, whether it be accountants, lawyers, maybe it's a commercial banker, or others that, again, have a network themselves. So if maybe you have been doing a lot of networking uh, up to this point, reach out to those people that do have a network. And through that net, their network, then you can maybe access individuals that you're trying to identify. Again, you've got to go into it, though, trying to have a good sense of uh, the type of skill set, experience, or person you're, you need, um, because that will limit the scope of the, the, the network these people are needing to reach out to or figure out who's going to be a good fit. Um, the other thing is, obviously, once you start identifying um, potential advisors, it, it's really important that it's a good personality fit. Uh, you got to be comfortable with the individual. Uh, I think it's also critical that as you as an entrepreneur, um, and, I, and I, I feel this myself, myself as, as an entrepreneur and having done and started a company, is finding people that are really passionate about what they do uh, and get excited about what you're doing. Um, because what's going to happen in this process as you bring on either individual uh, advisors or, or try to create an advisory board, oftentimes because they do have industry uh, knowledge, industry experience, and industry reputation, it's going to be those individuals that third parties, with your permission, are going to reach out to. And if they're excited about what you have or the potential of what you're trying to create, then that's going to translate to their discussion with these people that they're, they're talking to. And I can tell you, you know, without you know, any question, that that passion drives decision making. And if third parties see that even your advisors are passionate and excited about what you're doing, I think it's really helpful in the process in, in convincing them that this is maybe something they should take a serious look at and, and get involved and get behind. So I, I do believe that's an important part of, of, of selecting your advisors, a personality fit, skill fit, fit, experience fit, but you know, are they excited about what you're trying to do and, and, and passionate about it? Um, because frankly, there are advisors out there that are people that have been very successful already. They've done you know, companies, built companies, sold companies, and they like to give back. I mean, I have uh, come across individuals that you know, are kind of real, real believers in what goes around comes around. And if they you know, were successful themselves, they like to help other people be successful as well and try to lead them through that process of, of trying to grow a company. Um, and so there are those people out there and identifying and locating them I think is fantastic if you can do it. Um, and sometimes frankly, uh, and we'll talk about it in just a second here, is the whole compensation side of this. Um, sometimes they're willing to do this or at least uh, some put some hours into it without it, the expectation of being compensated. Uh, because they know eventually that's something that will come out of it uh, because of this belief that what goes around comes around. So, you know, that's kind of some of the value proposition of, of what an advisory board can bring to the table. Um, that kind of covers a little bit of what, uh, what you need to do to identify these people. Um, and then one of the things that I, you know, I'm frequently asked is, okay, so we're an early stage company, maybe we haven't even done our first institutional round of fi financing. It's kind of been friends, families, and fools, as they say to this point. Um, and we don't have a lot of cash. We're basically trying to put all the cash into uh, product development, building the company, uh, launching the product or the service into the market. So how do I compensate these people? Traditionally early on, or earlier on, when say you're not really a, say, a venture-backed company yet, um, that's going to be in the form of, of stock options. Um, and, and that's, we set up a lot of equity incentive plans for companies and the companies that I've been an advisor um, board member for are basically offering stock options. 
and they, they set up the plans where they can offer them to both employees and non-employees, whether it be board of directors, advisors, and, and frankly, sometimes even vendors of the company to get the, uh, the stock options. Um, so that's one form of compensation early on. I think as a company goes through the growth process a little further, and maybe they do get some institutional money or, or substantial money invested in the company, and if you get to the point where you're formalizing the board, um, because early on a lot of companies will do more informal. It's just um, meeting with people at lunch or maybe in the morning on, on, or just telephone calls or, or things of that nature. And it's not necessarily a formalized advisory board that meets, say, quarterly or monthly. But if you fe feel that that's a value as the company um, grows, uh, and you get to that stage and there is enough financial resources to do it, you start seeing sometimes a combination of equity plus a small amount of cash compensation, maybe on a per uh, advisory board meeting. So that's typically how, how these companies will, will compensate the advisory board members uh, themselves. Um, you know, again, it, the, the makeup of a board though, uh, and I think it's important to, to keep this in mind, frankly, or the makeup of your advisors can change over time. What your needs are as an early stage company, again, maybe it's product development, maybe it's just business plan writing, um, maybe it's figuring out how to launch the, the product into the market, identifying the channels that you're going to go into. That's different than maybe what you need when the company has already launched the product and now you're talking about issues of building your sales force. You're talking about back office systems and and scaling those to allow you to grow the company because sales are starting to pick up and maybe the, the back office systems, your ERP system or something else needs to change. So you may need to look to other people with experience in, in, in those areas that you didn't necessarily need when you were a much uh, younger company. So just keep in mind that this advisory board makeup and who these people are um, can change over time. Uh, and that's okay, and that's probably something you should expect to, to happen. Um, and you might luck out and, and find some advisory board individuals that have skill sets that translate or, or cover uh, a variety of those aspects of areas. Um, but if you don't, then again, you reach back out into the, your network, your professional's network, and other people's networks to try to identify those people and, and bring them in um, to help you out with the company. Um, the other thing I think is really important is really setting proper expectations with your advisors and your advisory board as to what your expectations are in order for them to quote unquote earn say the, 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 the cash and or the equity that you're giving to them. Um, and you know that could be in the form of you know saying hey I want you to participate in a monthly advisory board meeting, a quarterly advisory board meeting or I'd like to have access to you. Uh, a certain number of hours a month uh, to basically, quote unquote, again, earn the, the equity that I'm uh, giving you in the form of, of stock options. So, again, I think it's as long as you, you do that early on, then there's um, no issues later that somebody isn't devoting the time you expected when you first had this discussion with them. Um, and I think things go along better, the relationship is better. And I think there's a, a, a better um, kind of working working relationship between the company and the advisors if you have some level of, of set some level of expectation as to what what that might look like as the company uh, grows and, and you start using their advice on on a more regular basis. Um, I you know I think generally speaking those kind of cover uh, uh, the the areas that the advisory boards I think can. Um, be helpful, the value proposition that they provide to a company, uh, how you identify again uh, who these advisors are, where the need is that you, you, uh, you desire for their, for their services uh, because there's areas that you don't have that knowledge or that skill set and then also the compensation side of, of, um, of compensating them basically for their services and for their advice on a, on a go forward basis. So hopefully that was, that was somewhat helpful, there's certainly other questions. Um, and information that I'm sure you can think of, um, but that'll give you a good perspective of what it is to uh, set up advisory boards and, and, and some of the factors that go into it and how to compensate uh, those individuals.